I just, I haven't come across a root in a Tommy game that left so much of an impression in my mind. Honestly, the emotional roller coaster I went through reading his root. Oh. Hello everyone, it's Luli, and today I'm going to be doing a super fangirling review video of Jack Jan. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize in advance that this video may be like I may be a little bit more hyper than usual but the fact that Jack Jan this Otome game that I absolutely adore has been announced for localization has you know got me a little bit like too excited shall we say um I'm not gonna lie when I found out I felt like I was gonna have a panic attack um from happiness if that's even a thing like my heart was like this and I was like <gasps> like out loud and and you know it was it was it was a bit embarrassing to be honest but <laughs> anyway I knew I knew that it'd be great to do a review video to share my thoughts even though I've only played three characters but I will go through everything and try and express my emotions but also be objective about this game oh one little news before I start also is that I have sort of set up this like membership and super chat thing uh, for YouTube. If there are any of you who have been wanting to donate, then now you have the option. Um, although I'm happy with just like views and more importantly comments because I love interacting with you guys. If there's one exciting perk is that you get to use, you know, my special chappy emojis when you watch my streams. But the alternative is you could join my Discord and use them there anyway. But anyway, that's enough. Let me move on to the exciting review. Um, so let me start with the plot. Basically, this game, it's called Jack Jan. It's about this girl who, you know, adores acting, absolutely loves it, but is living an ordinary life. Um, she really wants to get into this high school for acting uh, that's super famous. However, it's only available for boys. And her older brother uh, manages to get into this, you know, prestigious acting school. Um, but... Obviously she can't, being a girl, so she kind of almost feels perhaps jealous of her brother. At least that's the kind of feeling I got. Like she looks at, you know, the theatre production where her, you know, older brother stars in it and is kind of looking from the audience like, oh, I wish I could be in there. Like that sort of thing. And it, it, it does kind of hit you a little bit, even though it's already at the beginning. And can I just say the artwork already from the start is gorgeous so um yeah that's already a exciting point about this game um because it's by the mangaka who wrote uh, Tokyo Ghoul yet another point to note <laughs> but anyway so she wants to go into the school but it's only available for boys however one day the principal of this school appears and says to her hey Kisa um your older brother I know he was really good but he's no longer at the school um I want to change things up a little bit and see if a girl would make a difference to, you know, like the classes and stuff. So if you would like, I'd be happy to get you, or give you a chance to attend this school as a boy. But there are several, um, you know, criteria type things. Uh, one is that no one can find out that you're a girl. And another is that she needs to be the main role or managed to get the main role of the final production that they do at the end of the school year. So of course there are these things that she needs to consider, of course she also needs to be accepted, like get into the school through the exams in her own power, not like, you know, because someone knows her type of thing. Anyway, of course she manages to get into Univer Gakuen or School of Univer as uh, they call it. And, and she gets put into one of the four classes. There, there is Quartz, um, oh, Rhodonite, <laughs> sorry, I love how it's taking me down, <laughs> Onyx and Amber. And they all have different kind of traits almost. And Quartz is kind of like the most versatile almost. I guess they're the ones where they feel like they're sort of special in that they don't really fit into Rhodonite or Onyx. 
and I won't go through all of them because part of the enjoyment obviously is finding out for yourself. Um, but anyway, she manages to get in, she meets a couple of uh, people and it's, it's exciting because one of the people she meets is her childhood friend who they used to do like make believe when they're children and um, it's, it's kind of cute actually. Uh, now anyway, that's how it all happens and then the, I think the fun thing about this game is that there are theatre productions after each term so you have like the spring one the summer one the autumn one the winter one and then the final one and oh my god i'm not gonna lie like i won't lie to you when i bought this game i wasn't really expecting like i didn't think i'd like it right because i heard the romance is like quite quite sort of subtle and tame um and uh, I don't know, I just, I got it because of the fact that it's the same mangaka as Tokyo Ghoul because I was kind of like, okay, and it was hyped up on my Twitter and stuff, so I was like, okay, I'll get the limited edition, which I have made a video if you want to check it out, um, but I thought I'd make a, you know, I'd get the limited edition and see what this game is all about. And I was surprised, I'm not gonna lie, I honestly thought I wouldn't enjoy it all that much but I played it and I lost a lot of sleep because of this game and I almost cried a couple of times, it's just saying a lot for me. Um, but anyway, all of the theatre productions are really well written, not to mention in each one you have like a singing mini game and a dancing mini game, basically they're rhythm games that you play while they do like their dance or their singing and um, that's quite fun too and the music is so good, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it sticks in your mind, like you're, it'll be in your mind for a while. Like there was a soundtrack um, sold specifically for this game and oh my god, it, it, I've got it and it's, it, it, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it gets stuck in your mind. But anyway, enough like going on and on about the plot and how much I like this game. Let me move on to the system. Uh, so the system isn't quite like a traditional Otome game. It's not like a normal visual novel where you just read and then you choose options. Now several things to note. So firstly, it is a, it has this map function, so you kind of, every now and then there, you have an option to pick what location you go to, typically on the weekends and breaks and stuff, but, and there'll be of course the little faces of all the characters where you'd pick those faces and it would kind of go into talking to that character and it increases your affection with them. Now note that you can't just increase your affection, that won't do it, that won't uh, trigger the you know romantic or uh, relationship uh, events. Uh, what you also have to do is you've got uh, six skill points that you have to raise gradually. Now they all need to be raised in order to um, manage to successfully become uh, in a good ranking for the uh, uh, theatre productions because you know you kind of want to ideally be first place I believe for the uh, as a class overall I think I can't remember but you know there are these criteria and in order to do that you need to have your skills at a set level like all of them however each skill set is respective of one the love interests so if you want the best ending for that love interest, you need to really skill it up. You need to max it if you want the best, best uh, ending. If you want the good ending, it just needs to be above a certain level. I will explain a little bit more at the end of this video of how I would suggest you go about doing the stats because it. I think when you do it blind, you sometimes don't have it high enough and you get, just go down the kisa ending, which is fine too, that's pretty good too, but obviously if you want a certain love interest, you kind of want that too. Um, so I will go into detail on how I did it so that you guys don't have to like go and find a walkthrough or anything, but if you don't want that, you just want to go completely blind, then I just watch this video until kind of almost the end and then skip that bit. Uh, anyway, so. Yeah, you've got these skills. Uh, every week you kind of pick like what um, class you want to attend and that increases your respective skill. And um, your skill for that character needs to reach a certain point as well as their affection in order for certain events to trigger. And um, obviously each event shows their emotions, their thought process, their backstories. And um, yeah, it's great, it's great. Honestly, I've only played three characters but all of them were interesting in that you see them like thinking, like their stresses, their worries as part of this school. And um, 
it's 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 really good like it's so heartfelt and wholesome like all of them I was like and these are three that I'm not that into like because I usually go for the ones that I least like to the ones I most like and even they like oh my god one of them really honestly it's the kind of route that I have never experienced before and um yeah I, I truly recommend that route but anyway oh note that there's also like a stamina slash exhaustion bar you want to make sure that that isn't like past a certain point otherwise I think Kisa ends up getting a cold and you waste precious time just resting or something anyway so after every like each sort of season I guess you have a theatre production by which you need to make your levels of each skill to a certain point um, all of the theatre productions they're all diverse so none of them feel repetitive uh, you watch them and you get addicted like honestly you get addicted um, however in these you also have this uh, dance and singing mini game it's basically one of those mini games where you have the lines and you have to like press L or R to go with the lines to follow it like where the dots are and it's a rhythm game and you do have like easy normal and hard settings um so if you <laughs> if you really suck at these mini games <laughs> you can always use the easy option but bearing in mind the easy option is so easy that it's like this is a bit boring I'm not gonna lie <laughs> you do get opportunities for practice so don't worry too much about that it's not like they throw you in and you're like oh my god I can't do this uh, and you can always save beforehand as well so you should be fine um, however one thing is and I guess this is a problem uh, but when you're doing the theatre production when you do the rhythm game to the dancing or the singing you have like the animation of them dancing in the background and that can be very distracting because you want to see what they're doing right <laughs> so <laughs> that may end up affecting your score because you might get distracted and be like oh no yeah of course i'm playing the game <laughs> so uh bear that in mind now how long it took me so as I said, I've only played three characters because, of course, the gameplay and, and all the similar dialogue, you can you can um, fast forward, by the way, um, but all the dialogue, obviously, is quite uh, kind of, it's quite, it makes the gameplay quite long. Um, it's not like a normal dummy game where you, it probably takes you like 45 or 50 hours to complete the whole thing. I think it would probably take a lot of people like 100 plus hours maybe to get every single character note that it isn't just the love interests i believe you also get like side stories of all the side characters as well and there are quite few of them so not only do you have the love interest endings you've got the kisa endings and i believe you have like kind of stories and stuff you see of the other characters so this is one of those games that has a lot of replay value and you could put a lot of hours in however of course there might be that repetitive feeling what the second time you play it because you do still have to go through the theatre productions as I said you can um, skip through it so you don't have to read it but that's something to note um, and also there is love catch in the sense that whenever you pick an option and if it increases the affection of certain characters it will show you after you've made that decision sometimes decisions don't matter so when you if you pick that character and when when you're on a break like when you've got the map, map function sometimes an option will appear but regardless of which one you pick it will still just increase the affection so note that there's that as well now my favorite part character descriptions so you firstly so the first character i played was sojan which is kisa's childhood friend he actually knows that she is a girl because he's you know a t childhood friend right however I think they let that slip because they're kind of like okay fair enough and they share rooms um so it's kind of good for her because you know if she shared rooms with someone that didn't know it'd make things a lot more difficult but um I personally I went for him first because he's not really my type looks wise he's quite feminine he's quite um depressing <laughs> to be completely honest <laughs> incredibly pessimistic and shy and I just sort of think when I watch him I'm just like oh god you know oh. I mean bless him but can't he be a bit more 
you know, optimistic and a bit more upbeat. Now, of course, he gradually improves, and I think it's that character development that made him so fun to play. Uh, he has a few things that happen during the route, which, again, I'm not gonna say what happens, obviously, because that would be like a spoiler, but the way his character develops, it, it, it takes a few interesting turns, and those twists and turns are, it's like a up and down roller coaster almost, and, um, because at moments you're like, yeah, and at moments you're like, no, <laughs> if that makes sense, I think. So I think he's more of a, so in Univeru, you've got um, Jack and Dan. So those who are playing Jack roles are basically playing the male roles. And those playing Dan roles uh, are basically playing female roles. And uh, because he's quite short, he looks quite feminine. And you can guess this right from the start, but he basically ends up being chosen as a Jan role. And of course, as a boy, I think he has mixed emotions about that. He's a little bit like, oh, I don't know. Um, because there is another character that I think is the kind of person that he may have wanted to be. Um, which again, there are interesting character dynamics in that sense where you see their thought process towards other characters as well, which again, it gives that three dimensional feel for each of the characters. Um, now, anyway, moving on to the next one is Suzu. Um, okay, I haven't played him yet, but I'm gonna talk about him because he's also in the same class and same year group as Kisa. Now he's the complete opposite of Sojan. He's just bright and happy and he's almost like kind of puppy-like. Bless him, he's not the smartest, he's a bit of a himbo, uh, but he's adorable and I have heard that he's a very shoujo manga-ish character where the root feels kind of like a cute romance type of thing. Um, he doesn't know that Kisa's a girl at all from the start, by the way, and my guess is, like, I haven't played his root, but I can tell he probably, it probably won't clock until <laughs> And that's what I guess anyway, because he he's a bit silly. <laughs> but as I said, he also, you know, he's complete opposite to Sojan that he's very sunny, he's bright, he's like optimistic, and he looks very masculine. And um, I can tell that Sojan, well at least I feel like Sojan looks at him and goes, I wish I was like that, because Suzu also gets chosen to be a jack role, which um, obviously is the male role and probably what Sojan wanted to be like. So um, yeah, it's it's interesting, although he's he is very you know, throughout all the other, like, the other routes I have played, he's just always been a very positive and shiny character. So I think if you want some, like, energy and you want to feel happy, he may be a good route to play. Now, the third one is Mitsuki. Um, he is a year older than Kisa. Um, he is a Jan, and he is a very good uh, singer, so his singing is absolutely beautiful, and that's what he is part of, uh, basically, Univeru for. And um, the issue with him is that he's a little bit, like, he gives us a very lazy feel, Looks, looks wise, he is incredibly feminine. He is so cute and pretty. Um, so it makes sense that he's a Jan Ron with his beautiful singing voice, it makes sense. And I think, um, if anything, he probably would have been better in Rodenite maybe, but I don't know. That, that's a whole different uh, thing that you need to experience the story yourself. And um, yeah. Oh, did I mention? Oh, just, just in case I didn't mention, there are four uh, classes. Quartz, Rhodonite, Onyx, and Amber. But anyway, she they end up that they end up in Quartz. I probably have said that, but just in case I haven't, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, he's also in Quartz. They they yeah, they're all in Quartz. But um, he's very pretty. He's got a lovely singing voice, but he is a little bit lazy, and that is kind of like one of the characteristic things about him that you'll see throughout and um, plays a role in his uh, character development. His route didn't have as much of an impact as So Jung and Neji Senpai's did, um, but it was still emotional in seeing his thought process. Again, their thought processes, the backstories, it's just so three dimensional that even though I didn't find his route as exciting as um, So Jung and Neji's, I still, I still enjoyed it. And oh my god, his singing. And yeah, anyway, before I spoil anything, 
I'm gonna move on. Um, the third one I played is uh, Neji Senpai. He's in third year, so you know, two years above Kisa. He's probably one of the quirkiest characters I have ever come across in an Otome game. Like honestly, he's just he's just so weird, but like in an eccentric, interesting way. Like honestly, he's just so <laughs> weird. <laughs> but it makes sense and you need that sort of character. It's the kind of person that you would expect in an acting school. He's just he's the definition of eccentric and um yeah oh man his root was it left an impression honestly i just i haven't come across a root in an Otome game that left so much of an impression in my mind honestly the emotional roller coaster i went through reading his root oh oh my god again he doesn't know this as a girl um but oh honestly Honestly, it was, it was good and like, I, I like the thing is looks wise, he's really not my type and personality wise, he's really not my type. He's probably like so far away from my type. <laughs> but when I read the story, I was just like, oh my god, I'm so glad I read this and I just, oh. <laughs> you can tell that it left me speechless. And I really hope that you guys feel the same way about it as I did. It was just so emotional, touching, wholesome. Basically any word you can think of that is like touching. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it, yeah. I, I just don't know how to express how I felt. But he is very quirky. He's eccentric. He's a bit over the top in everything. Um, he's clearly one of those talented genius type characters. Um, and everyone kind of finds him a bit weird and a bit like, what's wrong with you <laughs> right from the start? But yeah, no, everyone also respects him because he's just such a genius uh, in like the acting and script writing because he writes all the scripts, which is unusual. Usually the scripts are provided in the other classes, but in, in courts, he actually writes them. They're all so good. As I said, every single theatre production, I was like, oh, I need to finish this and I lost a lot of sleep, so... <laughs> But anyway, next one is Humi Senpai. He is also in third year, so two years old than Kisa. He comes from the family of, you know, professional um, Japanese dancers and uh, um, they expect him to take over perhaps a very traditional and very, like, renowned, let's just say. And he's also amazing at dancing. And usually he takes on the Jan role. Oh, and uh, with Neji Senpai, he tends to also take the Jan roles. Although the kind of female roles that you're like, oh, this is an interesting one, if you know what I mean, rather than your stereotypical, fragile, gentle, beautiful, elegant type. And um, yeah, Humi is also a Jan role, although I'm not gonna lie, like, I would probably see him as both because I saw Humi as a little bit like masculine even though as a Jan, like as a female, he looked absolutely gorgeous as well. Um, and he gives off this really sexy vibe. I'm playing him next, so he's gonna be my fourth root. Um, but yeah, I just get really like sexy vibes from him. I've heard a lot of people felt like his route wasn't as romantic or not as romantic as they had expected. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing his thought process and I, I imagine, this is me guessing, but I imagine the fact that he's got this burden of his family expecting good things from him can be a bit, like take a bit of a toil on him. And uh, I'll, be, I'll be looking forward to seeing his mental process, process and uh, character development because this is, this is what, like this game is all about character development and having three-dimensional characters like honestly they are so far the ones that I have played have been exceptional but yeah he is beautiful at dancing and everyone watches him and is like oh my gosh because of his like dancing skills and I guess that's his kind of strong suit uh, but yeah he's often the arujanu which is um the main genre so like if 
someone is like the general and is that that is like the main you know heroine or whatever then they're called Adojan and uh, yeah so that's what he often ends up doing and oh my god but anyway <laughs> let's just say he's a super sexy dancer and uh but probably has like thoughts about how he is the heir to this traditional Japanese renown for dancing uh, family. Now, last but not least, and this is the character that I am most looking forward to, is Kai Senpai. Uh, Kai is also in third year, and so two years old than Kisa. He's he's a bit. <laughs> he's one of those characters that. Animals like I don't know that like that's the kind of vibe he gives off. He he's really cool, right? And like masculine, and he's a Jack Ace, which is like the counterpart of Adajan. He's like the main Jack role. Um, but as a Jack Ace, he's really cool. And when you look at him from afar, you're like, oh, he's really cool. But when you see when you interact with him, he's he's a little bit odd <laughs> so in japan we call it tenneng which is when someone is naturally a little bit odd silly or like a bit like they don't get common sense type of thing so the way they think isn't quite how most people think that it's a little bit odd <laughs> Um, I won't go into too much detail because obviously the comedy of it is from the surprise but like he says things where most people would say A but for some reason he's like thinks more of B. I don't know how to uh, explain it but because he seems so serious and cool and yet has these like silly moments that gap is just oh my god my heart. I'm leaving him to last because I don't know, I'm just really excited to, he's probably gonna make me laugh and because he doesn't talk much, I really don't know what to expect from any of the, uh, like all the other characters, I could kind of get a feel for what issues they may be going through and what their thought processes are and how they may develop as characters, but in his case, I have no idea. I honestly don't know how his route is gonna go and um, I'm looking forward to it because I can't guess and because I like his kind of weirdness. And although looks wise, he isn't my favorite, like the way the mangaka like kind of, like the way Ishidasui draws the characters is a little bit odd for me. Like I needed to get used to the character art, like when they're speaking and stuff, you know, like the standing portrait art. Because to me, it looked a little bit odd. I guess that's what happens when a mangaka draws uh, for an otome game. It doesn't look quite how you'd expect it. Initially, it put me off a tiny bit, but after playing like a, like an hour or so, I, I got used to it. It's really, it's really weird because I played the demo before purchasing and uh, I did get used to it. So, um, so looks wise, he's not like completely my type, but character wise he has attracted me in the common route and i'm really really looking forward to playing him and yeah he's very masculine he's good at dancing as well and him and fumi uh playing the main roles together everyone's like oh my god they're so cool you know and you really get that feel and yeah so he's i guess you could say he's a bit of a kude maybe i don't know as i said all of these characters it's hard to put a trope onto them because they are so like quirky and different in their own ways with like the crazy character development um so again please play it so that you know what i mean but anyway moving on to who i would and would not recommend this game to i would recommend and i'm gonna be Try, I'm gonna try my best to be objective here <laughs> because I like this game so much it's gonna be tough <laughs> but I would recommend it um, to those who like high school games because it is based in high school not to mention like theatre is it's all about theatre and so if you were like a theatre kid growing up I think this will be right up your street I would also recommend it to those who really care about the story you want a good depth story like where each of the characters have like their own issues and background and you like you really get to dig deep into it if you like that sort of thing this is perfect if you like beautiful art like if art 
you know, matters the most to you, honestly. Oh my god, the art in this, like the CGs. I'm not that fond on the um, standing portraits. You know when you're like playing and there's dialogue and you get them standing. I wasn't huge on those, but the CGs, oh my gosh. I, I look at them and I'm like, this is gorgeous. One of the most gorgeous um, art like CG arts that I have seen and that's saying a lot because I have played a lot of Atomic games but it's breathtaking and the music as well it's it's so beautiful honestly it sticks in your mind forever again there aren't many Atomic games that have captured my attention in terms of music to this extent um so many of the pieces because each one obviously is it, the theatre productions are key to this game so the music in that like each of the theatre productions is quite quite important if you want to kind of create this feel or image of the theatre production being good you know so they've put a lot of effort into the music and art and um I'm, I'm not gonna lie like I was impressed and all the background music of each of the characters like you know how you get character themes they were good too I, I think I really liked um Mitsuki Senpai's uh sort of theme music as well um i thought that was that was the prettiest personally but you know e each of them really suit them and i i i yeah i, I liked it it's good i would also recommend it to those who like sort of deep characters this isn't just about stories but like it's all about the kind of character and so not only do you have like the overall story of kissa working her but off to you know get to that final production and like it all going well or or not depending on how you do um but if you like that sort of thing but also you want like depth in all of the characters like you that's really important to you then i would recommend this game i would also recommend this game i know i'm like i recommend like a billion people <laughs> but i would also recommend this game to those who like rhythm games because in every theatre production, um, during the rehearsal, you have like a practice session for the music. You can choose not to, but you know. And you have like the theatre production during which you need to ace that uh, rhythm game. Not to mention you've got like several difficulties and like easiest one is, um, to me it was boring. Um, but the really hard ones, the satisfaction when, you know, you manage to do it all. And those people out there who adore, you know, rhythm games, I think this is great for you. Which links to my final point of who I recommend this game to is those who enjoy gameplay like rhythm or stats or map functions, those who are a bit like meh about um, just normal uh, otome games like you know the ones where you just read and pick options. I mean some people prefer that obviously because it's quite relaxing but if you're the type that likes a little bit of gameplay in your otome games then this is also perfect because you know there's, there's some element of that. Now, moving on to those I would not recommend this game to. I would not recommend it to those who want a traditional Otome game. So if you want, you know, like an ordinary Otome game where it's just dialogue, you don't need to think of anything and you can just pick the answers or whatever and it's all done. I would not recommend this game because as I just said now, you know, you've got all these other elements that you kind of need to balance out and all of this. Um, I would also not recommend it to those who aren't really into like the high school thing, um, you know, because it, it is based all on high school and theatre. So, uh, <laughs> so obviously it's going to be a little meh if you're not into that. I would also not recommend it to those who absolutely crave uh, romance and steam because although I would consider this an otome game, like 100% because there is an element of romance there, it's it's incredibly subtle because a lot of them don't even realise she's a girl until like right at the end. Um, so, you know, it, it may be that you, you want like a kiss scene or you want like more and it's not there. And if that really is important to you, like that's one of the main things you look in a game, this may not be for you. However, saying that, I do like romance in my game, like quite a lot of it, um, you know, and the games that I tend to be a little less hyped about are those with less romance so things like Busterfellows and Code Realize I know they're huge fan bases for those games but they were not as high on my kind of 
you know, obsession list. <laughs> what do I mean, obsession list? Um, because you didn't see that much like romance. Same goes for Cafe Enchante. You see a lot of like action and things that happen and then the romance like is right at the end type of thing. And I normally am not like huge on that. However, for some reason, Jack Jam, the story and the character development, everything was so good that I could overlook that. I didn't really care that much. And the romance bits were like a bonus almost. So I thought, oh, that's cute, you know. But as I said, if, if romance and steam and all of that is kind of the epitome and the thing you look for most in a Tummy game, I would also not recommend this. I would also not recommend it to those who are looking for extreme emotional or extreme comedy. I'd say this game has a bit of balance of both. It's very much like, you know when you watch a shonen anime and you're sitting there rooting for the characters to do their best and when they do well you feel like so happy for them and you're really excited? It has a similar feel to that. Um, so if you just want something that's gonna is out there to make you cry or is out there to make you laugh like if you're on the two extremes then I wouldn't touch this game because like I don't know I think personally I like that it was a good balance it almost made me cry in bits and it made me laugh in parts and I like that balance so but if you're at the moment feeling way too happy or way too sad I don't know <laughs> maybe not but this is me trying really hard to think of people not to recommend this game to <laughs> Um, let me think. I would, yeah, I would also not recommend it if, you know, you don't want to spend that much time on the Otome game. As I said, it's very long. There are very repetitive moments, which I can imagine being off-putting to some, um, because, you know, Although you have those character events, you have to go through all the other, you know, them preparing for the theatre production, all of that. Um, but just like I said, you can skip through, but if you're the type that can't deal with that and you don't want to spend too much time on an Otome game, then I'd probably give this one a miss as well. And I think that kind of le sort of concludes my who I would and would not recommend this game to section. Do ask me questions in the comment below or in my Discord, um, and I will try my best to answer them, of course. But anyway, yeah, that I think that, that covers it. Now, my rating for this game would probably be, oh, it's tricky. I think I'd give it like maybe a four, 4.5 out of five. Um, the reason why it's not like five is because of the, I guess, repetition and having to go through those processes. Um, and also because of the slight lacking romance. Uh, I am, I got very hyper, I lost a lot of sleep over this game, but there's a reason why I have only played three characters, is because it's so bloody long, you know? <laughs> um, but it did hype me up so much, I lost so much sleep because I just wanted to know what the theatre productions are gonna be like. And every, every time, you know, you found out what, what it's about and you get to that process where you see them do the acting and you see it, oh my gosh, honestly, it was so exciting. I felt like I'd gone to like watch a theatre production in real life, so it, there's just something about it. Like you just can't wait for the next one and you're so excited. And I really like the high school thing as well. I adore high school games. I think it's because my high school life was a bit meh. So when I would see it in games and stuff, I'm like, oh, this is cute. And it makes me all happy because I kind of go, I wish my high school life was like that. <laughs> so I think it's quite cute. And so, yeah, I will give it a 4, 4.5. Um, because although I was super, super hyped and very excited and adored this game so much, like honestly, you don't understand how hyped I was when I found out that you know it's gonna be localized like as I said I felt like I was gonna have a heart attack or something because my heart was pumping like for a good hour or two <laughs> uh, I got so excited but even then as I said it, it is long it is so long there are even side characters that I've heard you can complete like mini routes of like see events and stuff because they're an option in when your map comes up as well um so you know that's that's there as well and uh, so yeah, it's gonna probably take me some time to fully complete all of the characters and then all the side characters and stuff as well. But anyway, I will finish the spoiler free or, you know, review here in the next 
few minutes I will talk about not like story or plot spoilers but I will give you advice on how I would level up your skills to you know get that best ending with your character um, so if you don't want to know that if you just want to go in straight blind without knowing how like what to what extent you want to build the skills and stuff I would end it here and thank you very much for watching um, but anyway I will start that now so Basically, you want by the very first theatre production to have all of your levels at like level three maybe and then your skill for like the character that you want to romance, you put it up to about like a five maybe. And then in the, by the next theatre production, I would raise all the others for about five and then the main one as seven or eight. And then next one, I would aim to get that one to like a 10 and the others to seven maybe but like you'll probably have extra point like you know extra time so i would just try and focus all of my efforts in the skill point that matters and the other one i think by the end as long as it's like a max of 10 maybe you're fine and in order to get the best ending for that character that you're gunning for you'll need your level to be at about level 30 which is the max level and um, I think it's fine to be like 26 or 27 you will still get a good ending just you won't get that like after scenario that is quite sweet um, so bear that in mind but yeah I think I think you basically want to be about 28 maybe by the winter production I think I can't remember but you do want it to be pretty high because then you've only got like four months or so to get it to level 30 and it can take quite a lot of time towards the end because you need a significant amount of XP by going to classes and and all of that to um to get to the right point. I would also suggest if that if you go on the map on the weekend and the character you're going for is that always pick them um, because there are different dialogues every season and you just you don't really want to miss it because it's so much fun seeing the growth of that character even in those mini like situation like moments you know so that is my advice for those who don't mind not going blind and just you know would like to have a feel for the leveling up system but anyway i'm gonna end it there as always thank you very much um you know if enough people ask me questions in the comments or you know anywhere um, I will consider doing a Q&A video. I feel like quite a few people have questions regarding this because they're not sure whether it's an Atomi game or not. There isn't that much information out there. It's not like usual automate game. It's a, it's a tiny bit different. So I feel like people have a lot of questions. If you have any, put the questions below. If enough people ask questions, then I will make a Q&A video where I will answer all the questions that have been asked. But again, as always, thank you very much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And hopefully I'll see you in another one of my videos or streams. Bye!